Good evening and welcome to 630 Point of View. My name is Scott Hennon, radio talk show host on AM 1100 The Flag, and I am blessed to be in this spot tonight on behalf of uh, Chris Berg, who's off tonight, to chat with some interesting guests on the program. We're looking forward to a great conversation, as always. My first guest is Senator Tom Campbell. Senator Campbell has uh, recently announced an interest in being the governor of the great state of uh, North Dakota. We'll visit with him a little bit about uh, those intentions and also his time in the state legislature. But we should start first with uh, uh, an update on an unfortunate situation that happened at the Campbell Family Farms in Grafton, North Dakota over the weekend. Early on Saturday morning, you got a call about a fire. Tom, tell us what happened. Yeah, it was kind of unfortunate. We had a, one of our warehouses up in Grafton um, had a, a fire that kind of tore it out, and we were kind of devastated. So it was one of those, I guess, low blows. It was kind of a tough weekend, but um, it won't be the first time that we've had uh, you know, downs in our lives, and we're going to rebuild and hopefully be resilient and, and, and move on. So we're going to try to turn the negative into a positive and, and maybe come up with some, some newer facilities and stuff. But, yeah, it was a down weekend for us. A lot of potatoes in that warehouse, I understand, and a pretty good crop too, right? It was. Um, it was about 10 million pounds, about 250 semi-loads or so. So it was about you know 15% of our production. But we'll, uh, you know, we're fortunate we had a big big crop, so we'll be able to uh, keep production going through probably uh, maybe May 1st instead of June 1st. Well, a lot of folks have, uh, have been buzzing about that because it was a big fire, obviously. And uh, quite a, any, any word on cause or anything yet? There's suspicion that somebody might have set it up because of the fact there was some Oh, some tools and equipment that was stole, and it was found a couple miles down the road in a gravel road. So there's suspicion that, that there's some foul play there. So uh, the fire marshals and our insurance company will find out hopefully this week to see what happened. Well, I, I want to talk a little bit about this, this committee you formed to look at a run for uh, governor. Uh, but before we do that, for fo folks that don't know uh, Tom Campbell or the story of Campbell uh, Brothers and the farms and uh, the other business interests in the banking side of Choice Financial and uh, the property side, tell us a little bit about, uh, about your background. You know, we've, uh, my two younger brothers and I just started from scratch many, many years ago when we were young and uh, got into farming and uh, I guess lots of things, property management and uh, banking, and it's been a nice run and I guess you know, from my business experiences and the stuff I've learned, I think I've kind of developed some things where I, I'm in a position to possibly use some of those things to maybe hopefully lead the state sometime. And it's been an exciting run, and I've, it's something I've always wanted to do. And actually, on your show, about a month or two ago, you were interviewing the governor, uh, Jack Dalrymple, and he commented when you asked about names, he commented about my name in the legislature. So it kind of made me really think it's something I've always wanted to advance myself into politics, whether it's a <clears throat> federal position or statewide position or something, and it, it got my attention. I think some of the, the business experiences I've had would be a positive for me uh, in the state down the road. Now, I don't want to compare you to Donald Trump, but you've certainly had Donald Trump-like success in North Dakota along with your other family members, and sometimes that's a bit of a target when you decide to, to run for office. But I, I, I'm, I'm, I like the, uh, the, the, uh, the story of how it all, st all, how it all started, and, uh, and, and really, you, you, you built this, right? I mean, this, the, the uh, Campbell Farms uh, uh, really started from humble beginnings. Tell folks a little bit about that. Well, some of the people that are maybe 45 and older, and I still get reference, we had, you know, Grandma Campbell's potato chips that we, unfortunately, we had to uh, uh, sell and terminate that business because of Campbell Soup. Uh, thought we were infringing on their, their name and their trademark, and it was pretty intimidating. I flew out there, and I think I told you that story. It was rather uh, depressing when they, uh, they basically told me that unless you have a rich uncle or something, that, that you need to get out of the business. So we did. We, we changed our name, and then we had some problems with Frito-Lay. Uh, being their large vendor <clears throat> that we uh, were their competitor. So a few months after that, we were kind of decided that it wasn't our business because of the fact that we, we couldn't uh, go on in a farming business without free lay. So we, we moved on uh, to lots of different ventures, from restaurants to, to banking to trucking, and it's been a nice run. We've failed at a lot of things that I've learned. I've taken note at. I think I've turned a lot of those things into positives, and I think that's a positive for my interest where I can maybe lead the people and uh, you know everybody has downs in their lives every industry has is cyclical you know right now with the ag and oil down I think I've been through a lifetime of lots of ups and downs and I think I can take those experiences and hopefully uh, lead the state someday why 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 do you want to be governor you know Scott <clears throat> um, you see the direction our country's going and I don't like that uh, it's gridlock um, politicians can't seem to negotiate and get along and uh, I just want to make sure that North Dakota doesn't follow our nation's footsteps. And I think I would have a lot of insight in knowing how to work across the aisle, uh, compromising, 
common sense uh, stuff I've taken from the farm that to get along and to, to get things done in a conservative approach. And I think it's something I've always wanted to do. I thought it'd be interesting. And right now I think uh, possibly uh, that the time might be right. And uh, I would love to try to hopefully you know, steer our state through these challenging times where ag and oil is down. Mm -hmm. Would you have a signature if you ultimately, uh, you know, were to win the nomination and win the vote of the people? Would you have something you, you say, hey, this would be what a Campbell, uh, uh, you know, term would, would, uh, would stand for? Anything you want to do as governor? Oh, there's lots of ideas, lots of things. I think, you know, one of the biggest things right now is our labor force shortage. You know, we're short about 17,500 people. And, and, you know, Al Anderson, the Commerce Department of Governor, governor has been doing, attempting some, some things. But I like to take it up a couple levels on being aggressive. That's one of the biggest deterrents of most businesses is that the labor forces are so short. So that'd probably be one of my targets. I think that's one of the few things where I think the government needs to get involved. Typically, I'm, I'm you know, for less government involved, less regulations, but there's a few sec exceptions, and that would be one of them. Uh, I would probably be a governor that would, if you were to wanted to find me, I probably wouldn't be at my desk in Bismarck. I'd be out with the people. Um, uh, knowing and, and learning their concerns. Uh, I, I like to travel, I like to socialize, I like to visit and, and, and just kind of hear the heart beat of uh, the constituents out and about. I think uh, you know, one thing I'd love to try to do would be to have a, you know, once a week have a kind of a telecommunications conference uh, in the winters. You know, there's our states, there's a lot of long distances. I'd have, I'd have this, the, the, kind of like Donald Trump, Mexico bill offense. I'd have businesses bid out in each city. Let's just say you, you take, for example, um, Grafton. Uh, it's a long ways. It's about a four-hour drive. And I would probably put a televideo conferencing and whatever business would be interested in bidding on it, uh, two hours a week where they, they could come in and they could visit with the governor, in essence, live through telecommunications from Bismarck to Grafton. So they wouldn't have to drive 250 miles. They could do it. And if I picked 10 cities or so, that would be far from Bismarck. They could do that knowing they have access, in essence, to be right with the governor and talk with him and hearing their concerns I think would be one thing that I would sure like to strive to do. A couple other quick questions. One, are you concerned at all that revenue is uh, ticking down to the state because of the ag and, and, uh, and energy sectors you mentioned and the fact that uh, obviously the, the spending has gone up? I mean, does, does North Dakota need a belt tightening? Absolutely. And you know, one good thing about North Dakota, we're not like our country. We, we can't borrow money. We have to have a balanced budget. And I think it's going to be a, a good disciplinary tool in time to react positively, to spend, to be <clears throat> mature about it, to spend only the money that we have. You know, it's been fortunate our legislature has been pretty disciplined that we've got about, I think, 11 or 12 funds. So we're in pretty good shape for a year or two that we can survive and, and continue property tax reductions for like another year. Um, what concerns me is if beyond another year or two, when some of these funds get depleted and if the ag and oil sectors are still down, that's going to be challenging where we're going to have to see some real, real belt tightening. Final question, yourself uh, informing this committee, obviously showing interest, Rick Becker, a uh, 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 plastic surgeon, a uh, member of the legislature from Bismarck today announced his intention. Obviously, Wayne Stengem sounds more and more interested every day. Uh, you know, what, what's your thought? Is Wayne Stengem sort of the front runner and you're here as a, as a, hey, I'm there. If he's not there, are you in either I'd, way? Or I'd probably sum it up like that. Wayne's a good friend. He, he would be a, make a great candidate. And... Uh, until he officially announces if he's gonna, it looks like he's gonna. Um, I'm gonna do some poking and, and just to kind of see as I travel the state if people are interested in my style, my, my business uh, uh, career. And, uh, um, but yeah, Wayne looks like he's a good contender. Rich, Rick Becker is a good friend of mine. I worked on some legislation with him and he was in the House. A good, very, very conservative fella. I mean, I think he's got the most conservative voting record in the House. Um, so it'll be interesting to see where he goes with his. Uh, I watched his video today, and, and it was very good. So um, I'm, I'm kind of impressed, but it's going to be interesting to see uh, what, uh, what happens. Good luck. Thank you, Scott. Great Thank to, you. Great to be here. And best of luck to the Campbell Farms team on uh, cleaning up the mess and uh, getting up off the mat. Thank you. As good farmers know how to do. Right? Yes, it's a cool, cool industry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Senator. Senator Tom Campbell, our guest, a candidate for governor on Point of View. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk with a public service commission member, one of three in North Dakota, about something called the Clean Power Plan and what the EPA would love to do to your power bill. It's not good news for North Dakota. Stay tuned. We'll do that when we come back on Point of View.